one of the nice changes they've made to walls as well as having these old control lines is that you can now choose whether those control lines relate to the overall wall or just the core component because it used to be quite complex you used to have to sort of do some mental arithmetic to figure out how to draw based on the core of the wall no more choose that and I can draw I've left myself some dots so I can draw so that I can draw the core of the wall touching those loci I've used my snap loop the snap loop is the Z key or the Z key when you click on that key it zooms you in temporarily and you can see here I've got uh, the interior lining then my core then my cavity and then my cladding on the outside so that was going from left to right and so I'm drawing on the face of my core wall it makes it much easier to draw Now in detail, I hope you can all see the detail here. I've got my my finished floor here and then a two inch step down for the exterior cladding which I've told to be two inches below the core of the wall. So this is a big improvement in 3D modeling. You'll be able to get your cladding to start exactly at the right point in space you'll be able to get your cladding to go floor to floor, you'll be able to put your intermediate floors in, slabs, that kind of thing. I see there's a question on push-pull, I'm just going to um, check my questions. There's no simple questions on this topic at the moment, there's a question on push-pull which if I uh, get time I'll, I'll read and answer. It's not one I can answer quickly off the top of my head. So hopefully you guys are, are excited about, as, as excited about this as I am because to me this is a huge improvement, this ability to have your walls have 3D parts to them, different 3D parts. I tell you I've been waiting for this for such a long time. Now I did say that walls work in conjunction with slabs so let me zoom out and let's have a look at walls and slabs. This is the new slab tool. Now it's not like the old floor, it's quite different. Slabs have components. have a look at this again. I want to look at my... I've got a floor I've called the rib raft floor. Uh, I'm going to click on that button again. I, my dialog box didn't come up. It's on my other screen. There we are. So when I create a slab, I can create more than one thickness for a slab. Now this is a, a called a rib raft floor. It's common where I live. It's got um, large uh, areas of polystyrene topped off with a concrete slab. So it's got a nine inch foundation with a four inch topping. And so I've got two components, foundation and slab topping. You can make choices about how the slab will work in relation to the walls that you're choosing. You can now choose whether you want. Uh, you can now choose how the slab relates to the wall. Does the slab go all the way to just to the inner face of the wall, the inner face of the inner component, the outer face, uh, the inner face of the core wall, and I've chosen the outer face of the core wall. So my slab should automatically stop in line with my ventilated cavity. So I choose my walls.
click on the green tick and it creates a slab. If you have a look in if you have a look in detail, you can see that my slab finishes in line with my core wall, which I think is quite cool. Automatically does that if you set your walls and your slabs up correctly. Okay, but what if you move a wall? Turn on my connected walls mode. So if I move a wall, watch the slab. Slab adjusts. There's my floor. I've created a series of pods or holes that I want to make in my slab. So if I choose my slab at the same time as these rectangles, and I clip surface I can choose to apply those holes to just the foundation part of my slab so those those uh, rectangles have become holes in my slab if I change to a design layer we can have a look at a section. I've got two sections here. Uh, I'll just look at the left hand one. You can see that I've got the wall, you can see my uh, slab with its holes cut out of it. And I think this is going to be pretty cool. We're going to be able to do lots of things with these slabs and walls. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a ceiling in my project. I've selected my slab tool again and I'm going to edit or use a pre-existing slab style that I've created. I'm going to use this one called Timber Ceiling. With the Timber Ceiling style I can click on the walls I want to use and the slab will automatically find the boundary of those objects. Now when I zoom in I can see that my timber floor or my timber structure for my intermediate floor has caused the wall to reduce. The core of the wall has gone down by the thickness of my floor structure. So the ex exterior cladding doesn't come down as well. So the exterior cladding goes from the uh, two inches below, it goes up to the next floor level, I put my intermediate floor in, it pulls the structural core of the wall down but not the cladding. So this is going to be a lot easier for us to model our buildings in 3D. I can't, don't know whether you can see it, but what I've also got as well as a timber floor is I've got a, a two inch area for structural or three inch area for supporting the ceiling uh, using some proprietary ceiling supporting system and then a half inch thick, um, we call it Gibraltar board or jib board, a drywall I think you call it, but I've got a ceiling made out of the same sort of stuff. And I've told this particular timber slab to stop the drywall in line with the inside face of my other drywall. So you can tell it where you want to stop each component. I'm going to go back and look at my sections.
This view should give you a much better appearance. So you can see there's my core wall, there's my timber structure, there's my support, there's my t uh, drywall ceiling, and the drywall on the other wall is designed to go up to the underside of the timber. So you have a lot more control over the way you create these uh, slabs and walls. They do interact with each other. If you move a wall and the slabs are auto bounding, the slabs will automatically move. They will update automatically. I've had someone ask about um, end, end wall caps, because end wall caps are new. So I can choose which component wraps around the wall. So I chose the first component, the ex exterior skin, and I told it to wrap right around the wall. Now, I haven't had a big play with these wall caps yet. So it's likely I'll do something foolish. But in basic terms, we can now tell the components to come round the wall. So in this situation, I've told it to bring the ventilated cavity round and to bring the other round, the other end round. Can end wall caps work with doors and windows? I'm not sure they can because they're end caps, not mid caps. But there is a lot more control over doors and windows and the way that they insert into a wall. Uh, they have changed the interface for doors and windows quite remarkably. So this dialog box is brand new for the door settings. We can now control the, the general. It's the, the general's the same. The door is still doing the same, basically the same thing. We have a lot easier access to all the parts that used to be hidden. So where before you used to have to go through dialog or used to have to go through menu after menu. Um, now what we have is this ability to um, quickly get to that information. This is new though. The ability to have classes is new. So we have a lot bigger control over what classes we're going to use for door settings and you can choose classes that are pre-existing in the file or you can create new classes and you can use the same classes for windows and doors if you want uh, that kind of control. You don't define doors by their structural opening, a door is still defined by its leaf size. Um, I've just been warned that we've only got a, a few minutes to the end of the webinar. So I've got a couple of other things I was going to do. I want, one of the things I wanted to do was site modeling and then